What's up guys, it's your boy Carlos Becker and we're back again. It's The Loaded Conversation. And today we are here with special guests. I'm gonna call her One Mill Jill. I don't wanna call you One Mill Jill. I wanna call you Mill Jill, cause it's, it's really happening. But um, I'm super excited to have this conversation that we're gonna have with you guys today. Everything, well, the majority of the time we're talking pure real estate and I'm super excited to, that's, I'm, I'm, gonna call, I'm gonna go ahead and give you level six now, okay? I'm, I've, we've, we've dramatically increased our level of real estate-ing um, and I'm super, super happy for all the success that you've had recently and I, I don't wanna start with an I told you Thank so, you. but I kinda wanna start with an I told you so and I, <laughs> I, I really want um, people at home to just kinda get an idea of who you are, um, where you're from, I want to say, I think an I told you so is fair because I came in with a lot of skepticism. Which you hate, by the way. Which I did and which you were constantly telling me not to have. And it's been a mind shift, mindset shift, yeah. but it's taken a while. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. So. Uh, that is very, um, and it's from a selfish standpoint, that makes me feel really good. So I thank you for that. Because uh, we talk about mindset a lot, mm -hmm. and we talk about like with you specifically, I talk about like staying power, like mental fortitude. There's a lot of things that I know that you've done um, from a personal level in your life, like establishing things with a personal coach, which I believe like a personal development coach is necessary. And I always talk about you know your income can't too far exceed your personal development, and I think that that is legitimately showing up in your business. How long have you been a licensed realtor for? Oh, I should know that. But 10 months, I want 10 to say, months. maybe? So what, July, no, 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 eight to 10 months. Do you remember the first conversation we had um, when I think, because I don't know specifically, I want to say that in some way I encourage you to get your license. And then one of the first things you said to me, I don't know, I don't know if you remember saying this to me, but you were like, a few of my friends are realtors and they've been realtors for quite a while and they haven't made any money. Do you remember saying that to me? No, but I can understand why I would have because you see a lot of realtors yeah. out there just struggling. Yes, and that's a perfect uh, time for me to segue into this question. Why do you think that 87% of realtors, that's the statistic, why do you think that 87% of realtors fail within their first year? Um, I would say I think now that that's because they, they think they're going to come in and they're just going to have all these clients, like all their friends and family are going to buy houses. So they just, there's... There's an unrealistic expectation yes. of where their business is going to come from. And then they don't have any better guidance to show them otherwise. And yeah. then they just straight up don't have any better guidance to do better. Yes. And then they just fall flat and that's that. And I think the, the, the reality of it is, is that we're taught things in real estate school that don't have anything to do with getting a client. Correct. So, you know, you're talking about income, you know, uh, contracts, you're talking about real estate math, you're talking about fiduciary responsibility, but you'll never have any fiduciary responsibility if you never have a client. Mm -hmm. And uh, just so people have a better understanding of your background, um, what did you do before real estate? Well, when I first moved to Texas, which was about four years before where, I started where doing were you real born? estate. Uh, well, I was born in the United States in yeah. California. You're, you're, oh, I knew you were right. a California I'm dream American. girl. Okay, yeah. But I did grow up in Canada my entire life. Yeah, which, so. which, which this is, I got, people have to know this. So we've known each other for like years now. I don't even know how many years. years. It's been a lot of them. 2018 Damn, ish. before then, I think, because. I might have known you through social media. Yeah before actually living in Windsor, Ontario, yes. but not really, but not, didn't no, really connect no. until I did Primerica. Yes. And oh, well, no, Flex Life Fitness. That was, So there's remember. a lot of the businesses. No, look, <laughs> we've done a lot of different businesses. The thing that's crazy though, is that we both lived in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, and we both somehow moved to Texas in the same region and now work together again. But anyway. Yeah, well, to be honest, I was following you and I kept you kept doing things that I also was interested in doing or wanted to do because you were doing them. Yeah. And then you were just like an easy person to want to like, I wanted you to mentor me. Yes. And I couldn't figure out, the, I, it wasn't the right match until real estate. Yeah. I really wanted you to mentor me in prime, like when we yeah. did Primerica and then yeah. that kind of went wink wonk. Yeah. And so then when I saw that you were doing real estate, I was already so jazzed to do real estate when yes. I first moved to Houston. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, perfect. Now I can now I can work with this guy. Yeah. He can mentor me and it'll be in a field where I really want to be already. Wherever. And the thing that's so crazy is, and I, I tell people this all the time because I've done so many things, insurance, um, health and fitness, wellness. 
I tell people I'm going to do real estate for the rest of my life, and they're like, "There's no way, Carlos." I'm like, "Yeah, I might write a comedy tour or whatever, but I'm I'm on, I'm for the rest of my life, I will do real estate." Well, once you realize the power, how can you not? You, it's impossible, and and if you can have success, like we were talking about, a lot of people come in for the wrong reasons, or they have unrealistic expectations, and they can't be successful, so they quit, right? Mm -hmm. um, as I'm getting a, a lead call right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what? Oh, this is a great one. So what? What limiting beliefs do you think that you? people will have to change that want to get into real estate or that you've had to personally change to make it click? Well, personally, the limiting belief, which is just laughable to me, it's it was laughable, laughable to me then and it's laughable to me more so now. The, the idea that there's just not enough to go around. Ugh, I'm so... There are so many realtors. That's what I was saying. Like that's, I think that's what I was saying. There yes. are so many realtors. There's no room for me. Yeah. There yeah. are so many um, you know, realtors already that no one's gonna pick me. Yes. Where am I gonna get my business from? Because there's just already it's it's like a saturated market. Yeah, and the reality of it is, it's like, you know, if you if you have that mindset, it's like, well, there's so many football players. Why would I ever, you know, try to play that sport? Like, or there's so everybody's many. Everybody's doing it already. Exactly. Basically. But basically, what you got to do is find your niche and find out what you're the best at and why you want to do what you what you want to do. So. You think those are the probably the same limiting beliefs that a lot of people face, especially okay, they're licensed now and they're like, where do I go? Mm -hmm. And you you know you can go to this place, Remax, Keller, Century, and it's just like you're so overwhelmed with information. Um, I remember one of the things that you said to me. You're like, I can never see myself making you know thousands of dollars a month, and I'm like, why not? <laughs> you're right? Um, do you think that just belief systems in general? have something to do with the limiting belief? Like I can make 10 grand a month, I can make 15, 20 grand a month. Oh yeah, definitely. And that would depend on like where you where you're come where you come from, like your own personal work history, yep. your family, anything that they've instilled in you, just that in, in yeah. society and your your friends, your circle, who you're surrounding yourself with. Like if making 10K a month just sounds so astronomical, well for you know, you're probably like talking to the wrong people yeah. is what I would say it's now true. because plenty of people make 10 to 20k a month and I that, that seemed so pie in the sky to me before but yeah. I, I just wasn't hanging out with the right people I love that <laughs> answer what do you think makes you the most successful now because you're successful now whether you want to take this in and I'm I'm just saying this to you so that hopefully on an un, on an unconscious level that it sinks in but you are successful now mm -hmm. so you are working on multiple deals you have multiple deals in the pipeline and you have multiple deals going to close and so with that being said, that I don't know how that makes you feel for me to say that, <laughs> but it is what it is. So what makes you most successful now with all of those things aside? A higher stress tolerance yep. and just oodles more confidence. Yes. Because I will have those challenging conversations. I know how I need to prepare myself for them possibly. I'm not just going to off the top of my head yep. know what to say for sure, but I will have challenging conversations. I don't have to ask five other people for their opinion before I have them because I trust my intuition. I trust my own um, knowledge and yes. experience. And you, you have to have those conversations to move forward in any transaction. Man, and that's... So that's huge too. I'm, uh, I'm taking this moment to bask in all this. <laughs> because um, the reason I said at the beginning of the podcast, level six, is because you came in a true level one realtor. And mm -hmm. when I say that, I mean that in the, the, honestly, the most respectful way, because I think that Tom Brady came into the league and he wasn't even on the on the, on the the charts mm -hmm. for for a, a top 10 pick, let alone number one, but he's one of the most Super Bowls in, in history. Well, I wanted to do it so bad, but I was so scared. Yeah. Not only did I have a limiting, uh, the limiting beliefs, but yeah. I was scared shitless to have an uncomfortable conversation. Yes to face like these, you know, the challenging situations with my clients that they were going to face. Yeah. And so, I mean, that was a hurdle that I had to get by. And that's probably why a lot of other realtors just kind of curl up in a ball and hide under a rock and decide not to do it. Because it's not for the weak, it's not, not for, for the faint of heart. It's not. Well, what, 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 which one of your transactions recently have you learned the most from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's been a few of them, but which one do you think you, you've learned the most from? I had a seller. Yep. Can I name him? Yeah, you can. I had a seller. His name was Deadpool. He yeah. named himself legally, yeah. changed his name legally to that, which yeah. will kind of give you the first indication of what yeah. kind of character he might be. <laughs> that should have been my first red flag. Yeah. Or the fact that he asked me going into our um, business relationship for, you know, to work for a discount. Yeah. should have been my second red flag. Yeah. But I went ahead and took the, took the client, you know, took the listing because I wanted the listing. I yep. wanted the client, of course. But it was um, a great listing in a great area too, yeah. which you. It was a step up. It was it was I honed in mentally on where I wanted to be. Like you I, outperformed and I still... every realtor in that immediate market. <laughs> yeah. 
And I still am like of that mindset. Like I'm very honed in on where I want to be. I want my business in Richmond and Katy and Sugarland near yeah. near me and in the areas that I personally like the most in Houston. Which also right? so happen to be high income mediums. But anyway. Yeah, and so I'm I'm manifesting the shit out of that. Yeah. So I got that Richmond listing. I sold a house in Katy and I'm honed in on Sugarland right now. Nice. And I have I have a listing Which we're in Sugarland right now. Well it's not quite appointment. Conversation yeah. coming up with one in Sugarland. So anyways And you just had a, a listing appointment in Sugarland that I think you need to go back to because I believe that you can still <laughs> manifest that guy just based on that situation. But anyway we'll see, we'll see. I but, digress. But the but the but the the one that you got, learned the most from Deadpool what you know? What were some of the things that you learned, and why? I mean, at the beginning, as I kind of bumbled my way through it, which I have with sellers, um, I learned. I've learned a lot, like um, of the things that you have to give them the heads up on. That you assume people will understand about the process, or you assume that they're going to have the same um, level of like standard as you are when you show up to their house and they have their listening pictures booked the next day, and there's crap everywhere, and you thought saying decluttering would have been enough, but. No, you gotta like spell it out and or like you assume that they know that they have to sign something before you can actually take some action. But you should have said so, you know, like yeah. certain things where and then I'll come home and be like, Whoa. <laughs> and then my, su <laughs> my support system be like, well, did you tell them that? You yeah. can't assume that they know that process, Jill. You know the process, but the state, these people don't when they sell their house. And I'm like, oh my God. I think a difficulty with that client, because I actually had obviously some contact with him as well, was he would lead you to believe that he did understand. Yes, because he and was so overly confident to a fault, to yeah. his own fault, yeah. in an arrogant manner as yeah. we came to see his arrogance more down the line yeah. that that like he, he wouldn't, he wasn't even, I realized too that he wasn't even listening. The yeah. words were going in and yeah. out and I, I Or maybe sometimes not even going he in. Wasn't he wasn't actually reading my emails. Yeah. Like, and so I had to have a conversation with him and even as I was talking, he would respond about something that I wasn't just talking about and I was like, I'm kind of unsettled about this guy. Like, yeah. he's not, is he actually listening to me? Is he actually following the directions? So then you'd reiterate with a text and just kind of hope for the best. And but. I think that that's why you got it. You know, sometimes when you say declutter, I think one of the things I learned was you have to be really specific in language with certain people because they'll, they'll, they have a facade of toughness, but mm -hmm. they're really sensitive on the inside. And so, you know, maybe to somebody to say declutter, they're like, this isn't declutter. This is my stuff and I love it. Right. You know, maybe it's like, it's can general. we manage this? Yeah. So it's like, you know, can we manage to put some of the things to make some room for buyers to look at it this way and put many more words to it than just a, yeah. a simple statement? I think one of the reasons why you learned so much from that Deadpool transaction was because you had about nine different clients rolled into one. You had about nine different personalities rolled into one. You had nine different scenarios rolled into one, mm -hmm. right? From the sale of the house to making sure that the agent on the other side had, um, concessions fulfilled, repairs taken care of, uh, lease back conversation, mm. then taking that client and placing them in another home. Mm. And I think that's what, you know, the loaded agent is. It's it's a loaded deal. Mm -hmm. Like it's a loaded, it's a loaded dice. Yeah, we're gonna make more money, but you're gonna deal with more more BS. Oh yeah. Um, so what are your thoughts on just starting out as a loaded agent? Cause I mean I put you in to the deep end. I feel one of the things that I'm like when I like you more, like I like you more, so I'm harder on you. I'm more harder <laughs> on you. That's like a thing that I have, right? Like, and I, I try to explain. I try to explain this to Nicole. I'm like, she's like, man, you know, like you know, with you, like you're a little bit tougher. And I'm like, listen, I have an expectation for her that she might not know that I have for her. And I'm like, it's the same, like with Nicole. I'm like, I have an expectation for you. I have, you know, when you have an expectation for somebody. Go and ahead. Interestingly, I I come across as soft and emotional because I am, but I actually respond really well to that so, because like you might let that shit will break me down and I might cry. Yeah. But then I will be like, oh, yeah, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I will show you. Because I'm like <laughs> one of the, some of the main things I said are stress tolerance, and you just repeated it because you have more of it now. So, what are your thoughts on? The way we started, kind of putting you in the deep end, starting with leads. I'm saying like, you're going to be more successful than the average agent. And then we're going to shift into this loaded agent thing. What do you think about that? Like, how do you feel about the program, especially with the success that you've had recently? Because we've had deals where like, there's Jackie, right? But it's like, <laughs> how do you feel now? Um, well, I feel great about it because it's exactly like what you said at the very beginning, which was that like, you're not going to, I can't remember your exact words, but yeah. basically that you're, it's, it's, 
it's easier to find success, or I can't remember exactly how you put it, but but like you're never gonna have success, or you're gonna fall off the band, fall off the wagon before you have success if you don't have activity. Like, and with the you know the, with the activity and the experience, yes. like you're basically you're you're never gonna do it until unless you do it. And if you're just hanging around, licensed, you know, t shooting out the odd message or making your Facebook pretty and whatever, whatever, and you're not actually getting working with any clients, you're not actually going on any showings. I mean, that's also why I went ahead and got that Showami yeah. app for myself. Yeah. I, I was like running around doing all these showings, getting a few bucks, but spending more money on gas and tolls probably. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but getting experience. Getting out, talking to clients, showing homes, seeing homes, having opportunities to take some videos and pictures. Yeah. Maybe appearing to be doing the thing because I was doing yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah. And so, and that, that is what like compounded my confidence um, and, and knowledge with the experience exponentially in yeah. a shorter period of time. And had I not done it that way, yes. I would have, I would be in another job right now. Without a shadow because of a doubt. Because you can't just play real, realtor for months on end. You, you also money. have to pay your bills. Exactly. Yeah. So that's one of, the, one of the main things <laughs> I was trying to get people to understand. Like, you know, I don't know about this loaded distress that I'm like, <laughs> buddy, do you want a client that needs your help? I mean, yeah, you're gonna run through some that are just not even living on planet Earth. What people don't understand too is that just because somebody doesn't appear to be distressed, take bikinis, does not mean they're not gonna be disillusioned and end up actually being a lot of work with the psychology aspect, a lot of tough conversations, a lot of like bringing them down and then having to negotiate to bring the buyers up, like a lot of work, even though they didn't appear to be distressed, they didn't need anything, their house is paid off, they might owe some taxes, but <laughs> you know what I mean? They appeared yeah. vanilla and basic. Yes. And but they they required a lot of the skill sets that I skill set that I gained from the other ones yeah. from watching, you know, yeah. you guys. And at some point I had to kick it into high gear with them because yeah. they were otherwise just gonna sit on the shelf forever. And I remember the day that you said to me, like, I'm gonna have to have another conversation with the Kinis. I'm like, and I call Nicole, like, she's got this shit, right? <laughs> because either you're gonna kinda let them do if you let the client run the show they will run it right yeah. into the ground yeah and it'll be so, and then it'll be like curtains over well we and talked hire about a this new realtor <laughs> exactly and do the exact same and thing i got so pissed i i was so fired up about that i was like I, it was right before their you know because they only gave me 120 days it yeah. was december and i was like there's only two things that are going to happen here i'm going to rein them back to reality or they're going to fire me and, get and me i the remember realtor, and I, I will not lose this listen but i remember <laughs> you sending me the I, you cc'd me in the email that you sent them it was very stern and very straightforward it was like look they needed it this is what it's going to be this is what it's not going to be if you choose this path you're going to fall into the hole and go back to level one one or we can make these adjustments and we can warp zone up to level seven, eight. And Nicole really guided me well there at that point in time because I was spinning and there yeah. was a lot there was a lot going on that I needed to convey with them and I needed to put it into a structured and it came email. And at that point in time, I realized why have I not been doing more structured emails? Because people need to see it laid out. You, I needed to gather and um, organize my thoughts. Yep. And it that also gives you a, a time stamped and dated time that mm -hmm. I said this. And then this. they see the words. Instead of just talking to sometimes, because you can get almost like you feel like you're arguing with your yeah. clients. Yeah, 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 you yeah, want, yeah. You don't want that tone to come across. So you just need to give them like a black and white version here's of this. the words you yeah. need to understand with no tone imply whatever tone you want yeah please and then text them please review the email I and then listen and almost three quarters of a million <laughs> and almost three quarters of a million dollar deal later everything that you actually thought you needed to do you did and it panned out right so that's i mean to me that's what the whole point of the program is you you're, you get into some more intense situations in the beginning and it allows it it makes everything easier mm -hmm. it's like when i use the gym analogy it's like yeah the lightweight is you know the heavyweight becomes lightweight after you've been there so much and so consistently it's not as hard it only seems hard in the beginning what would you say your biggest accomplishment has been so far i mean i want to say having 1.2 million or so and you still got more contract coming. Yeah coming up in March, but um, I think I answered this question to you another time, yeah. is that really like it's the biggest accomplishment is the is the increased confidence. Yeah. It's my ability to do all of the things that we were just talking about. Yeah. And, and, then, and continue. And, and holding the mindset that there's more to come. Yes. The abundance mindset has Damn it, you're, finally you're, sunk in. You're, you're running right into my next question, which is <laughs> what are you looking forward to accomplishing? just more and more of the same yeah and going into it more confidently going into it preparing my clients better and therefore pre preparing myself better knowing yes. what questions to ask to be able to get the information that i need to avoid 
like conflict later that we didn't have to have, yeah. so on and so forth. You and know? you know, you're going to have that regardless. You yeah. know, that's why you're never going to know everything up front. And but that's you why can I'm definitely huge... do a better job up front. Then <laughs> you can. You can just lay. So really, we just call that managing expectations. Right. Yes. So that. you know, what can you do to manage expectations better? So what what was one of your biggest fails up until this point? I mean, I felt like, like I felt like the Keenies were such a big fail when yeah. I hit that point in December because I felt like I had failed them in yeah. allowing them to more dictate the price. I felt like I'd really failed them in not showing them more realistically the comps. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt like if I had been a more experienced realtor, I would have guided them to a better price. And hey, then, listen, we we've got... all, we've all, including myself and some of the best realtors in the game that I know that make multi millions of dollars have all taken that freaking overpriced listing. And then they're at knowing it was going to sit. Also like the client sometimes is going to be like, it's, you know, it's going to be a no for them. And then, so can you work with them and work them down and maybe get to a point of success where we are now? Yeah. Or they'll go with a different realtor who will well, tell you what they want to hear. Well, you actually just proved that you're, a lot of times in life, your biggest fail actually ends up being your biggest success. And, yeah. and winning actually isn't as, even as important as losing. Losing is actually what teaches you the most. Mm -hmm. And winning just makes you feel good. And if you know anything, winning is like, it's really temporary. That's why you're like, I want to say a hundred, I want to say 1.2 million, but it's really not shit because I want to do 1.8 million. Because yeah. that's a human, that's a natural kind of like human feeling. Like something bad happens and you dwell on that shit and you can't believe that it happened. And blah, 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 but then it's like something good happens. You're like, yeah, that shit was supposed to happen. I Next. Just, I just really don't feel like there's any big fails because all of the fails along the way have just been learning. Le lessons. The L's have been lessons. And that's a lot it. of the L's are turning into M's. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, I don't know if God put them in the, in the alphabet next to each other like that. <laughs> but before you take an L, when you take an L, the next thing you're probably going to get is an M. Um, <laughs> What would you say, what would you personally say to someone who came to you and was like, Jill, I'm ready to start the slow to change thing. Like, and let's, let's do it. Like, what would you say to them? Because I know you want to build a team, but that, that, think about that, but also think about the real conversation you would have with them. Um, oh my gosh. I don't know if I'm ready to answer that question. No, you got, you got to answer it however it needs to be answered. I mean, I think I would be really real with them yeah. about what's really involved. <laughs> First of all, it's called the real estate. She said really <laughs> real about what's really, because that shit is real. But continue. Yeah, like like give them a little bit more of an insight as to what I actually deal with on the day to day, and like not to say it's all negative because I thrive on the yes. the roller coaster. Yeah. It is a roller coaster. It is. But I thrive on it. I freaking love it. Mm -hmm. So like, do you really freaking love it? Do you really freaking want it? Yeah. And here's really a little bit more insight as to what to really expect. And what and we're like, really gonna be doing. If you want to, like, let's freaking go. Yeah. <laughs> because it's really about. We're going to have the support. We're going to have the leads. We're going to have the ability to reach out to them, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But do you really want to do that yet? Because that's what, that's all it boils down to. It's like, there is a lot that can happen that can go really well. But if you cannot tolerate a freaking weird response or iffy people that are kind of dodgy in their questions and answers, you're going to want your regular job. Yeah, and I think more so not what I would say to them, but like what I would ask them. Like, what do you want to get out of it? What are, yes. you, what are you expecting? You tell me what you think it's Are you watching like. HGTV? Tell me what you think it's You think Tarek's like. making a blind offer and it's going through every time? Yeah. That's not happening. Skip off into the sunset with your buyer clients after it's making not, one offer and everything it, goes hunky-dory <laughs> and you just show up at the closing table. Like. And, I, and I think the thing that's crazy, you know, and I just want to touch on this, especially when you talk about 3% commissions because, you know, you often make 4 or 6 or 7 whatever, and we're st and you're starting to really have that conversation easily where you're like, eh, this one's probably going to be 10 to 12 because now you understand managing people and expectations. But also the flip side of that is once you... You get, first of all, 3% commission on a million dollars. People are like, that's 30 grand, but they don't know what you have to do, mm -hmm. right? Also, you, you have to get good at understanding the way you spend money, the way your money comes in, how your deals are going to close, when they're going to line up. What would you say to somebody that needs to identify their mindset and the mindset that they need to start real estate? Well, you got to have a... A mindset of abundance yep. that there's more fish in the sea yep. so you don't sweat the ones that get away yeah I, I love it i love it um i got a couple of very specific ones but what would you say the the um the majority of realtors that you've dealt with on the other side have problems with um so a, so a few of them have just been really poor communicators, yeah. which just blows my mind because that's literally like what we do yeah. is communicate with our clients, <laughs> yeah. with the other agents. And like, um, 
Yeah, you know, some of them just have bad attitudes. Yeah, they're just yeah they're they don't they're not timely in their response. Oh, but you know what a big fail would be would actually be not trusting my own instincts when it came to dealing with um, the buyer clients for Deadpool's deal. Yeah, and um, letting her dictate dictate what happened when we took the offer and we didn't have the lease back in writing. Yes, and trusting that she that it would actually pan out as she said it was going to, which yeah. it didn't. Yes. And I knew that that was... You did a good job recovering on that. Time. I knew that wasn't serving my client best. Yeah, yeah. And I might have given him a verbal, which yeah. he probably didn't hear, yeah. a verbal <laughs> warning yes. that this leaves us vulnerable. Yeah. But he didn't hear it. He took the deal. And that bit us all in the ass, yeah, including yeah. the buyer's agent. And it was her idea. And she tried to make it my problem later. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I had to remind her at one point in time, this is this was your suggestion that we not have And you put me in that writing. email. And, and you now put me in that email. here we are. And like, and, and now you're trying to throw carpet cleaning in the mix. Like, what are you doing? So we're not doing anything. You promised your clients. I'm like, let, let's get to the bottom line here. Like, you overpromised and are under delivering to your clients. Yeah. And I can't help you with that anymore because you're asking for too much of my seller. That's it. Yeah. Whether I agree with him or like him or not. Yeah. So you did a great job taking care of your clients. So <laughs> basically the problems that realtors have on the other side, mindset, organization, communication, attitude. delegation, attitude, <laughs> they're obviously not loaded agents. Uh, how, so, how, some of them are disclaimers. Some, yeah, yeah. some of them are awesome. No, I love the awesome ones. Yeah. Let's make yes, sure that we say that because there are some really, I mean, you were just talking to one before yeah, we came into, I you love, know what I mean? Yeah. You can't, unfortunately, don't get to choose all the time the ones you would get to work with. You probably just you work choose. with them over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. How has the loaded agent program helped you be successful in the likeness of like, um, holistic approach to leads, Shannon Pyatt, shout out to Shannon Pyatt, uh, KB Core training, KB Core in itself, um, and just overall uh, TC support. How would you say that the Loaded Agent Program has been helpful for you in this $1.2 million run that you've got going on right here? I'm well, just, I mean, I think you basically, not, not average. <laughs> I think you basically just said it all because um, while I haven't been with any other brokerages, so yeah. I can't compare, yeah. I don't feel like I want to compare when it comes to what EXP has to offer yeah. and KB Core has to offer. Yes. Like there's no way I would ever stray from what I have as far as the, the programs and technology that we use. Yes. And then um, the Loaded Agent Program and our consistent training and just the, the the mindset and the the outlook and like just how we do things. Yeah. It just it's it's like Jill, you've been a realtor for less than a <laughs> fucking year. And you've made you have legitimately you have more volume. I can go on to Houston Association of Realtors right now, pull up agents, show you how long they've been agents, and show you their stats because it calculates and shows. So if you ever want to know how much better you are off than the <laughs> average realtor. All you got to do is go on to the agent report on HAR and look up people's stats that have been doing it for way more than you and have way less well. You know, when I, I always tell the story of when I started, I started with Keller Williams and then blah, 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 and they sent me a million emails and nobody gave me any support. And then I went over to boutique brokerage and blah, 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 and they didn't like my mindset because they said you'll get in trouble for doing this. And then I went to another brokerage where I thought everything was going to be okay. <laughs> and then I off boarded and just sat there for like 30 days like, damn, I got to close two more deals. And then Tyrone called me like, you gotta go to EXP, you can run the business the way that you know that it needs to be ran, and you can support your people and teach them the things that you know will make them successful. And uh, I, like I said, I just, I will never forget when you're like, I, th I think you were working HOA at the time, we were talking, it was way before I even got licensed, and you're like, oh, you're doing some real estate investment program, like I, I, I wanna get into that. And I was like, when I got my license, I was like, Joe's gonna wanna do this. <laughs> and from like the first time when I was like, you need to control your client, to like, when and you were like, Fuck that, I don't like controlling shit. I and can't then, do that. I can't control anyone is what I said. <laughs> I st maybe I didn't uh, say it to you, but I yeah, was yeah. like, screw this guy. Yeah, I yeah. can't control people. Yeah. What is he talking about? <laughs> but now you're controlling the shit out of everything. People, outcomes, expectations. You know what I mean? Like that's the way that it has to be done. Um, what would you say that agents and you know, we got a couple that just started the loaded agent program and I think they're gonna be good. Mm -hmm. But what would you say to the agents that are just starting? Like, what do they need to do? Because what I um, what I want you to say, I'm not even gonna say what I want you to say, but there are things that I want people to do when they come. What would you say that they need to do? Especially when you bring your people on, like what are you gonna want them to do? They need to pump up the volume as in crank up the activity. I love that you said pump up the volume. Yeah, if you can to... edit in the song, pump up the volume right at that time, I'd love that, but anyway. Pump up the volume.
volume, pump up the volume. They need to pump up the volume, yeah. they need to crank up the activity, and they need to knock it off with the fear because yeah. worrying about what somebody... Now, mind you, I did share some funny responses yeah, yeah. in the group text yeah, yeah, chat yeah. when we first started text yeah, yeah. blasting because I literally get a kick out of yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's mind-blowing. Am I, am I sad and butthurt over it? it no, is what it is. I don't yeah. care. It's just funny sometimes, but I don't waste anyone's time with that anymore or my own because yes. I got too much going on. Yeah. But yeah, they need to crank up the volume. They need to just like hit those text blasts harder. Do the thing. And just do the freaking thing. <laughs> Which I was telling myself to do the freaking thing for months. Yeah, so you can understand it. I understand where they are, where they are at. And it's funny because then when you're on That's the other exactly side. That's exactly what I want to say. when you're on the other side, you're like, you're like, come on. That's how you probably felt with me. I did. But at the same <laughs> time, I knew where you would be. There I was, was also going through some personal stuff. So, and that's, but I'm glad, <laughs> I try to tell people all the time when they try to say, oh, like money doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, it matters. Mm -hmm. And if you get some, the other stuff you're worried about, you'll worry less about. Mm -hmm. I'm just, it, it, And it. it's like money, ex like it expands. Like when you get some, you, you get more. It's like, look how she's like, rubbing those hands together right now. <laughs> it's like, if I get this money it's and like, I get no, a little like, bit more of this money, I hang up. As soon as I actually have like a little more, yeah. I'm like, wait, I need I need more. This is actually not that much. Exactly. Like, oh, I can make 10k in a month. Yeah. I can. I need to make 20k. This is nothing. Like. <laughs> That's but, all I'm saying. But once you once you have it, you get more. It's, it's so much easier. Like it's easier to save your money when you. When you get a big fat check. Yeah. And, you, and you get another. When one. you're when you're scarce, you're yeah. scarce. You don't give a shit. You run yourself into the ground with debt, and because you don't have any anyways, so fuck it. Exactly. And then yeah. That's it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Not a good place to be in. We call it the spiraling effect. Yeah. What was the most important thing that you think that the Loaded Agent program taught you up until this point? I mean, you've said a whole bunch of the shit, but I mean, like, even right now, you just answered that question exactly how I would have you answer because just do the shit. And to be tough, to be tougher. Yeah. Yeah, to, like, stop, quit your bitching and stop your crying. Oh, fuck. Just do the thing. Okay, we're over. We're out of here. <laughs> Cut it's it. So we're out of here now. I'm, like, ser I, like, honestly, if I could just have a, like... If I could sit down with the agent, new agents, because I talk to new agents every week. If I could just be like, hey, are you a little bitch or not? Right? Like, <laughs> you can be crying about shit that you shouldn't be. Are you going to be okay? Because here's how it is. <laughs> because, like, if you think that you're going to do this and it's going to end up like this, you're not going to be where you want to be. Yeah. you got to have some mental fortitude. So what are the expectations that you had when you were changing careers? Because I think the last thing you were fully in was HOA. Yeah coming over to real estate. What were what were some of the expectations that you had? <laughs> <laughs> and 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 how do you, how, how satisfied are you with where you are now? Okay, so I I drank the Kool-Aid and I believed everything you I I've believed everything you've ever told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I believed that I would make $5,000 a month. Let's, yeah. let's call it that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easily. Be, and you are correct. However, there was a bit of a gap of time before yes. that actually happened. Yes. So my expectation when I came out of my job was that I was just going to go on a few showings yes. and have a deal under in no time and make five to ten thousand dollars on that one single deal. And I'm just going to stop her right there because and hold that <laughs> thought. That also correlates with doing the thing. So you could come out the gate and get the five grand, but you're going to have to show fourteen houses. Well, and or it's not guaranteed. Yes. Nothing's guaranteed. Yes. And my first deal didn't yield me five to ten thousand yep. dollars, but it was what it was. Yep. And it took a little longer to get there than I thought it would and blah, okay. blah, blah. And so I feel like I'm now all of the things are coming to fruition that you all of the promises you made yeah, are yeah. coming to yeah, 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 However, yeah. it took longer and and that might not be the everybody's experience. Yeah. I also could have hit a whale right off the bat and that yeah. would have been a different story. And exactly. I didn't, but I didn't quit because I didn't. Exactly. And that matters. Know. That 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 matters. And I think one of the things that will, and I always say, my agents are so spoiled. I think <laughs> one thing that will always be true, I think for Connect Property Group and just the loaded agent in general, is that you will be much more successful than the average 87% of all the other realtors in the entire nation but you might not ever realize it because you started here. Well, I have a friend. I have friends who are realtors, uh, who uh, more casual realtors, maybe. Yeah, which is them. different. Some of them are full time. But yeah. I think, um, anyways, this one guy. Casually girl, full time, whatever. <laughs> this one friend of mine, and she's like, I, I told her, like, oh, like we're catching up. We're going to get together and do a vision board, like, hangout together. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I've just been so crazy busy. Like, I have four four uh, deals under contract at once at one point. And yeah. I'm just like, woo. And she's like, I've been doing this for six years. I've never had four deals under contract at once. And I'm like, well. I'm a load of agent. <laughs> because I mean, at the end of the day, if you, it like, I like, so I'll tell, like for instance, one of our new agents, you met him, 
last time we had our, our, our together meeting in the office and I said, and, and he's good. Oh. No, but you, Sorry, you, no you names. he's <laughs> no names, but he's, he's, he's a, he's a shark. You can tell that he's, a, he got the killer instinct mm -hmm. and you know, he's managed, you know, big facilities and he's, you know, all these football trainings and gym oh, trainings. Man. Right. And I said to him, I said, Hey, have you done the thing yet? He's like, yeah, I was going to, but then I was thinking like, mm -hmm. what if I did? And then yesterday I was going to, but then I thought to myself, what if he says, I was like, mm -hmm. Hey, how about you just don't think at all and just do? Yeah, you know what? Nailed it because I was, what I noticed in the last week or so is as he's, I'm, I've been so busy yes. that I'm hungry because yes. I know that after March, there yep. comes April. Exactly. And I don't have any closes in April yet. Exactly. So I still want to do the thing, but I'm like, before I used to be like, oh, I'm moderately busy and I'm worried about not having enough time to respond to text messages. So I won't <laughs> send a text blast because, <laughs> because I'm scared of being too busy. Yeah, yeah. My version of scared of success. Uh, yeah, exactly. But now where, now where, blah, where, Whereas now, yeah. I'd be like, uh, send a quick few text blasts, and then I'm getting out of the shower, and I'm like, oh, hey, respond, blah, 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 blah. and then like go about my business, making some lunch, like, oh, respond, like, oh, I'll get to it when I get to it. I'm not stressed about like needing to sit down and have two hours of uninterrupted time where I can only text blast and take your responses. Like, what is that? That's like, that's so trying to control so the outcome. That like, you can't control. Yeah. The and, only thing you can actually control you is what can, you do. Yeah, so you gotta like let that control shit go too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Ding, ding, ding. Um, <laughs> what do you like most about being um, Connect Property Group? Well, I work with my great friends, yeah. Carlos and Nicole Puck, who <laughs> I've known for years, and they're like family. For real though. No, I love it's you guys, like seriously. Be, yeah, it's wonderful being in business Stinkin Lincoln. with my friends. I love watching him like so grow cute. up. Me too. You know, like, no, but seriously, like just like being on a Zoom, like, he wasn't doing that last time. I know. Like watching so him cute. scurry past the screen and stuff like that, or like engage in the camera and stuff like that. Or even when you see Satan Prayers like hop on my lap on the Zoom call. It's like we're we're the watching quality our quality of life of having the like the flexible, like yeah, we work our asses off and sometimes I'm trying to do things while he's home and uh, on the weekends you're wrangling, but yeah. it's, I can also And take... I'm like, yo, Saturday we're doing a podcast, get your ass out there, one yeah. million. Anyway. And or trying to be on a Zoom or trying to finish an offer and it's nighttime, bedtime. Yeah. But still I have so much more flexibility of time. I do not have to be in an office every single day. I can if he's sick, I'm home. If this needs to happen, I'm there. Um, and just if, think if, I, if I decide I want to pick him up early I can do whatever the won't. But just think, imagine the fact <laughs> like that, that that only gets better the further ahead that you get. I'm looking forward to that. And then when you actually just need to chill, you can chill and yeah. you've got three closings coming up. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. That's what I try to explain to people. I'm like, listen, at the end of the day, you're going to work your ass off in the beginning. But, you know, if you work a job, you have to depend on that person to give you that raise that Forever. you, you know, or what are you worth and blah, 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 blah. Like, no, I'm going to depict what, I work, what I'm worth based on the amount of output that I'm willing to put out. And then at the same time, it's like I told you, you know, when that... When that time comes in your life and when Prince Charming rolls up on the white horse with the sword and blah, 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 and the armor, I, there's a shield, it's in my mind. But, you know, <laughs> I'm when glad that, it's in your mind. <laughs> but when that happens, you're like, oh, I can, I can take a week off, right? Yeah. And as you build that team out and as you take advantage of those transaction coordinators and you take advantage of the support on the back end, you can live a better life on the front end. Mm -hmm. That's what I think people are the most afraid of. Um, what do you think the best thing, and I, I'll kind of like wrap it up right here, but... Because this is really, this is, I, I think it's important for people to see this from an, hear this from an agent that's been in the game for less than 12 months, but has legitimately years of experience. And I hope that you understand that because you have been in real estate, a licensed realtor for less than a year, but actually have years and years and years of experience. And I say that because you have dealt with and seen more than the average realtor deals with or sees. Yeah, does that make sense to you? Do you understand where I'm going with this? Absolutely. You also have the ability to invest in real estate because you're dealing with the majorly you know, distressed sellers that gives you the opportunity you know, to throw out these crazy ideas like maybe getting a subject to under contract or doing a fix and flip, knowing maybe you don't want renters now and maybe just doing <laughs> seller financing when you get yourself a property. So what do you see the most valuable? I don't want to say most valuable or like what's what do you what idea do you hold on the most that kind of keeps you going in what we're doing? Does that, does that convey like what ideology, like for me, the idea that I hold on to is like building a legacy, having Antoine, my oldest son, be able to pick up his real estate license and be able to teach him something at a young age that will dramatically increase the quality of his life way over time. Leaving something for my, my young, my younger boys who don't, can't even talk really fully yet, but yeah. knowing that they'll have a better life or more opportunities because I'm able to set them up through the business that 
we do right now. And that keeps me going. That makes me hunt for the next deal or go on a Saturday where I actually get three signed listing appointments in one day and keeps me really upbeat. What ideas do you hold in your mind is basically what I'm saying, or in your mind and in your heart that keep you motivated and, and moving forward? Um, well, definitely like building a life for my son, being able to provide like the, the basics, but also just being extremely proud of myself. Yeah. Because doing what I love and then actually succeeding in it is like a whole other level of success. Yes. And pride in myself that I've not experienced, that I'm starting to experience. Yeah. And that's huge. And yeah. then also for my son to see his mom in that in that role not yes. just like mom has to go work 12 hours a day every day slave away to yeah. to provide me barely enough but like look at my mom is a rock star businesswoman kicking yeah. ass taking names and killing it because fuck man it's getting expensive to live like eggs <laughs> are eight bucks milk's four cheese and not is... having to rely on anyone including his father yeah <laughs> to help like i just need to it's it's me doing it for myself by myself for myself like that's I, i've that's been my dream since i was a little girl i've been what like I've been too I've, kn I've known that about you for, for quite yeah. some time. I'm, so that's I'm, what it is. And I'm that's really... why the Prince Charming analogies go over my head. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, like the what I look like, like when I when I think of that, what I look like for you is somebody that can match that effort. Match, yeah. Because absolutely. I've known you for quite a while now. I, I can from the outside looking in, I think it's always easier for somebody from the outside looking in to give a good prescription, mm -hmm. right? And so like, I just want to say, I'm extremely proud of you. I've watched you. I knew that you would be this person. I don't know what business it would have landed on. It just makes sense that it's real estate. Mm -hmm. The mental fortitude, the grit, the staying power, the continuously getting back up and charging forward, being a lot less stressed about the smaller things and being able to take on so much more. So before we get out of here, I think that's your camera. Where can these uh, beautiful people um, find you? You know, for real estate needs, social media, where can, where, where are you? Where are you located? Jill Evans Realty, I think, is one of them. Where, where, where can we find you? Instagram, Facebook. Oh, I can't remember my Instagram handle. Is it Jill Evans Realty, <laughs> or is it there an underscore somewhere? Hold on, hold on. Let's just Jill Evans Real Estate Agent. Oh gosh. Jill Evans Real Estate Agent on Facebook. Jill Evans underscore Realty on Instagram. Um, so follow you on those two places. I think that yeah. you have, um, and then you guys can follow us on connect property group. That's connect property. I think I shortened the group to GRP and then I'm Car at Carlos Puckerin on everything. And then the loaded agent Pinterest, I hooked it up with a Pinterest Twitter. We do everything now. LinkedIn. I'm my, my social media I'll, manager. Eventually I'll do the TikToks. Yeah, we're going to do TikTok. We're going to get you on uh, Pinterest. It's all important. It's, it's crazy <laughs> that. Yeah. It's not just for design ideas. And I don't know. Planning. I've been on Pinterest lately. <laughs> Etsy. I got an Etsy account. It's getting crazy out oh here. Oh my gosh. But thank you guys for joining us on the Loaded Conversation with myself and one mil. Oh, I got a con Before we get out of here, I got this campaign for you. Oh, no, it's like. Uh, so this is how I envision it in my mind. It's like, um, go to, it's whatever agents do that, you know, lack of communication, Jill won't, right? It's like, whatever agents suck at, like show up late for meetings, Jill won't. It's like, put in 100% of the work that's One needed to be One Jill, she'll be there when you call. Jill will. Ha, ha, ha. All the things that other realtors <laughs> that won't, get me into Jill trouble. won't. <laughs> but everything that needs to be done, Jill will. Load of conversation, guys. We're out of here. Peace. Wow. Okay, that's a wrap. <laughs>